In this tutorial, we're going to talk about the immediate window. Now, this is a debugging utility and it is extremely useful. If you haven't seen my last tutorial on debugging, breakpoints, code stepping, then I highly recommend you watch that before watching this tutorial. So the immediate window, what is it? If we come down here, you can see this little tab here called immediate window. Maybe you've seen it before, maybe, maybe you've been wondering what it's all about. If you don't see this tab here, then if we come up to the top, we can go to this debug menu here. Now this is where all the kind of debug utilities and features live, if you are wondering. Go to Windows, and then go to Immediate. And when you do that, we come back down here, and this little tab should appear right here. Now the Immediate window can be used at design time, or run time. So what does that mean? Well, design time is when we're kind of developing. We haven't even hit the green play button yet. We haven't compiled anything. We're not running anything. But what we can do, we can actually work with our software in design time. So the software is not even running. So let's take a look at this example now so I can show you what I mean by that. If you followed our earlier tutorials, we made a sample calculator where we ask the user for a first number a second number and then an operator and then inside a method here for example it takes those numbers and an operator for example five four and then maybe plus and then if the operator is a plus it adds them together and then just displays the result which would be nine in this case so what we can do we can actually test this method from the immediate window like it's crazy right the software's not even executing it's not even running how do we do that <laughs> let's take this method here calculate for example so i'll copy that we'll come down to this immediate window here now anything in the immediate window starts with a question mark so that pretty much says okay i want to run a command so I want to run this method. So what I'm going to do is call this method. I'm going to call it with five or, and it takes a character. And remember characters are in single quotes. And we're going to do a plus. And when working in the immediate window, the semicolon is optional. We can put it, we don't have to. It doesn't really matter. Now watch what happens when I hit enter. It actually runs our software, compiles and runs it, and then gives us the result for this method. So you can see it actually did this at design time. My software wasn't even running, and it gave me the value 9. So it's a pretty good way of testing things like methods, evaluating expressions at design time, but also runtime as well. It can also do this while the software is running. So that's pretty clever, isn't it? So if I put a breakpoint maybe here for example so let's clear the immediate window we can right click that and click clear all and that will just clear out the window for us so now up here i have a breakpoint on double result equals calculate so before i even call the method i'm halting the program so nothing else is going to continue i run the application by clicking the green play button or pressing f5 it doesn't matter and now we're asking for the first number. So five, and then four, and then I want to add those together. So now the program is stopped executing. So if I come down here, the bottom corner, I have this immediate window right here. So I can do lots of things here. I can run that method again, for example, while the code is running. One useful feature is while the code is running, we have this IntelliSense, the autocomplete. It's actually providing us all the variables in scope, like num1, num2. Uh, it, we can pass it custom information if we want. So if I say 5, 4, and plus, just like we did before, and then I hit enter, we can actually get the result. But you can see here, nothing has really happened here. We can still kind of continue with this calculation. <laughs> so that's pretty cool, isn't it? So what I can also do is use existing variables. So right now I have num1. And num1, if I go over here and highlight this value, you can see the user gave the number 5. And num2, they gave 4. And the operator, they used a plus right there. So what we can actually do is use those variables so we can actually see the result before the method is even executed. 
Or maybe I want to multiply them. So you can see here, 5 multiplied by 4 is 20. So you can see the immediate window can actually intercept various things, evaluate expressions, run methods, lots of things like that, all while the code is actually in break mode. So this method hasn't even run yet, for example. Now there is one fine detail with that. In this immediate window down here, I've called the calculate method twice now. But imagine if calculate did something else, maybe it counted something in the background. So every time I run calculate, it keeps a running tally, a running total of how many times I've called it. Now, running this method in the immediate window would affect the results. It's like this method is actually being run. Now that could cause various problems. So depending on what your code does, if you mess around in the immediate window here, it can affect the results up here. It just really depends what your code does. For something like calculate, well, it doesn't really store any information. It doesn't, you know, count anything. It doesn't keep a running total of how many times it's been called. So it's pretty safe to run in the immediate window. However, there are cases where it would be unsafe, for example, for those other reasons. So that's just something worth noting. So let me demonstrate that now, just to illustrate what I'm talking about. So let's say this calculate method does keep a running tally of how many times it's been called. But we use this running tally for important purposes. Maybe something else relies on it. So this field is just going to keep a tally of how many times the calculate method has been called. And when the calculate method is called, I'm just going to increment this local field by one each time. So if I run the application now, I'm just going to set a breakpoint on here so we can pause the execution of the software. I'm going to type in some sample figures like 5 plus 4. And then I'm going to come over to the immediate window here. So let's hover over this private field here num times. You can see the value is currently zero. But if I run this method inside the immediate window, let's maybe run it three times. And by the way, by hitting the up arrow on the keyboard, I can look through my previous things I've typed in here. So that's pretty cool, isn't it? So I've run the calculate method three times, but only from in the immediate window. If I come up here and hover over my private variable here, you can see it has the value of 3. So things in your code are affected by anything you do in the immediate window down here. So it is really important and it's something you should be made aware of. Again, obviously everything resets when you run your application. But as far as debugging goes, it is worth noting this. So I've just talked about the fact that when using the immediate window, for example, to call methods, can change things in your code. Now, this could be wanted behavior. Maybe you want to do this, and that's perfectly fine. But there are situations, like in our example previously, where we increment a variable, for example. But we need this in here, and we don't want anything in our immediate window to change this. But we do still want to kind of run the method from the immediate window. Well, there is something we can actually do to overcome this problem. So in the immediate window, where I call the method, Whatever you put in here, whether it's calling a method, evaluating an expression, finding out the value of a variable, you can just suffix it with a little command called NSE. And that stands for no side effects. And you can see when I type that, uh, Visual Studio gives us some nice indication. So right now, if I come up here, you can see our variable here, number of times is zero. I come back down to the immediate window and I press enter. So you can see calculate has actually run the figures, it's added these numbers together, but I've specified this no side effects flag. If I come back over here and hover over a number of times, you can still it still retains the value of zero. So by specifying NSE, it means that no side effects are gonna happen as a result of you calling this method from the immediate window. So that's pretty cool, isn't it? So that's one of the features you can do with that. So we've called methods with changes. We've called methods without changes. Well, what else can we do in the immediate window? Well, we can view values of variables. So for example, num1, what is that? Oh, num1 is five. That's pretty cool, isn't it? <laughs> uh, so always prefix it with a question mark. 
And obviously these are only variables in scope. So for example, if, this if, if these variables don't have a value or they haven't been reached yet or they haven't been initialized, then obviously you can't read the values of these. So it's only what's called in scope, what we ha actually have access to. And what we can also do is evaluate expressions, for example. So 5 plus 7, for example, it, it will give us the result. And we can do that with variables. So num1 divided by num2. So it's pretty cool, um, especially when you're debugging, you've put in some sample numbers, but you can halt the execution of the code and play around with it in runtime. So rather than restarting the application, trying a few numbers, restarting it again, trying more numbers, you can see how the immediate window kind of expedites that problem. You can just put in whatever you want, and maybe you're trying to locate an error or an issue, and it gives you a really fast, easy, and dynamic way of trying to locate these problems and errors. So this is why the immediate window is pretty cool in that sense. But not only can we just call methods and look at values, we can actually assign values as well. So if we looked at the uh, value of num1, which the user entered, is 5. And they entered num2, which is there, 6. And the operator was a plus. So we're going to get 11. What we can do is actually change values of variables. So rather than adding 5 to 6 and getting 11, let's say num1 equals 11. And now num1 equals 11. Let's make num2 equal 12, for example. And we'll leave the operator as a plus. So now we've changed to those two variables. Let's come up here. So now if we hover over those variables, you can see num1 is now 11 and num2 is now 12. So we've modified the values of these variables during break mode, while the software is running at the speed of light, like we were talking about before. So we've actually modified things at runtime. That's, that's crazy, isn't it? It's amazing. So now if I press F5 and continue with the running of the software, you can see the result is 23. The user entered 5 and 6, but we kind of went in there, modified some stuff, changed this one to 11 and this one to 12. So you can see the result is the reflection of the change that we did in the immediate window. So that's pretty cool, isn't it? So imagine the immediate window is like a little notepad where you can play around and change things and call things. That's the power of the immediate window in Visual Studio when working with C Sharp.